part of what you saw take your seats in the control room, this is part of our applications. Let me explain. Imagine that you find these two boys to go and sit for eight hours, and you don't have to do much. Right? Okay? So what about I just stay in my office with my phone down the phone? Okay? And I just wait for data to flow down to my computer, and then I can write a very nice analysis or a nice paper or a nice article or a nice presentation to get everything off the rails. This is fair for everybody else who fits the detector, calculates the detector, writes the software, so just to analyze. And analysis is really the very last step of a very long queue. Okay? So we have a system that goes like that. We all have to, okay, you have your expert, your, 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 your scientific interest. That comes also sometimes with the team phase two, okay? You get hired to do sometimes that, but we also have a lot of scientific things, okay? And what I like in my profession, that it is totally okay to be wrong. We are not going to get fired, okay? As long as we have, you know, all of the scientific methodology, it's fine to go, but you know, there's nothing new there. This is also scientific problem. Now, all of us, we have our scientific interest, okay, but then the collaboration says, you know, for me to operate the machine, that means that I need to fill, let's say, 1,200 shifts per year. You do not hire a staff person. You sign up for this. You get credits. They need your name. And we also have other tasks, not only the control. Maybe you are uh, an expert in writing software or calibrate or something, or doing other stuff, okay? And you get credits, and only when you get the minimum amount of credits, you get your name in the office. And that has to be reviewed every single year. Well, this is, but this is fair, right? I mean, you cannot expect to just sit back and wait everybody else to do your job. And this is fair, why? Because it does not matter if you are an undergrad student. Well, usually, undergrad students, they are not offers. But it does not matter if you're a graduate or a postdoc or a professor, you still have the same obligations to the collaboration. Okay, so it goes like that. And then we have a lot of working groups. Um, for instance, I am leading a group in CMS, which is 150 people. That includes about 20 different universities. Okay? And in my position, although I'm not a full tenure professor, I just tell to full tenure professors who have the task. Because I consider to be the expert. Okay, and then there is a hierarchy in the experiment. You get assigned for a task, and my job is, for instance, these things that you see on the detector, how do these things, these things translate into analysis? How people can use that when they want to really make analysis. Okay, that means that I have to build algorithms that you go from, from uh, let's say electric signals to real physics. Okay, and these are very, very big efforts. So who is going to do that? Okay. So this is this is rather you know I would say it is something that we most of the days we're happy to do. You know some things are not like any other profession, right? And it, it and it is very rewarding because exactly we have this we enjoy this nice thing. 